one of the things about the 9-11 wars is they're, they're, it's a conflict in the image of the, of the contemporary world, which is, in a sense, inevitable. Every epoch, every era creates its own conflicts that are of that era. And you'd expect in, in this sort of connected, chaotic, complex, ambiguous world that we now live in to have an ambiguous, chaotic, complex conflict, which you do have. Uh, which is one of the reasons I wanted to write the book, to kind of bring this all together. Uh, and one of the problems with writing it was trying to bring it all together, but without losing that sense of it being chaotic and complex and often very different. I think one of the strongest things, looking back, uh, that you can now say was wrong, was the great fear that possessed so many people in the West particularly, immediately after the 9-11 attacks and in the middle of the decade, around 2004, 5 and 6, when things did look very, very dark, when there were bombs going off across much of Europe, when there were riots in France, there was a cartoons crisis, Iraq was going very badly, violence in Afghanistan was beginning to climb again and there was a genuine fear of some kind of global conflict, not the sort of conflict we actually saw, which in many ways was relatively limited in terms of its impact on our societies, but something much, much more intense. And looking back, you can now see, actually, that that anxiety was never really justified, and that, in a sense, Al-Qaeda had failed in its key purpose of radicalising and mobilising hundreds of millions of Muslims much earlier than many in the West thought. And that, I think, is the, the key element that when you step back and you look at the 10 years as a whole, you see most clearly.